Okay, Julie, are you all ready to learn how to make a pizza the right way? Making it great. Yes, I'm ready. Are we going to cook pizzas now? Well, there's a lot more to it than just cooking. In fact, that's probably the easiest part. But let's start this process at the beginning. First of all, are your hands washed? You sure are. Good, mine too. All right, let's say an order for a pizza comes in. You'll read it and you'll get started on the pizza making process right away. You have to act fast. Just think, the sooner you get that pizza in the oven, the sooner our customers will be biting into it and tasting how delicious it and is. And they'll have me to thank. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because we're not just making pizza, we're creating an experience for our customers. Think of it as making pizza that makes customers happy. I like that. Our customers expect the same high quality product and service every time they come to a Pizza Hut. And that's true whether it's a busy Friday evening or a quiet Tuesday afternoon. Our job is to make sure they're never disappointed. I won't let them down. Okay, let's say the first order we get is for a medium pan pizza with pepperoni and green pepper. This is the It's where we keep the proof dough until we're ready to use it. So we take out a medium pan prepared by our dough master and we check it for quality. Now this one looks good. See, if the dough weren't right, if it was stuck to the separator or it was too flat or it had air bubbles in it, then the finished pizza wouldn't be right and our customers wouldn't get the best possible product. Which they deserve every time they visit Pizza Hut. Right. So, if the dough isn't exactly right, we throw it out and we get another one that is. Now, pan pizza is easy to top. First, we start with the sauce, and you get the right amount from the spec chart. We go to this chart that says bottom sauce and cheese. And we go down to where it says sauce, and we see that a small gets one level spoon, a medium gets two spoons, and a large gets three spoons. So, what do we do? Two spoons? Right. <laughs> now, we keep our sauce right here with our other refrigerated items. We keep this lid closed, except for when we're making a pizza. First, spread the sauce to within a quarter to a half inch of the edge. Now for a medium pan pizza, two spoons equals five ounces. Be sure not to pour the sauce onto the center of the dough. And don't press down with the spoon, because that could cause the pizza to be undercooked. It seems easy enough. It is. Just be sure to do it exactly this way every time. Any variance wouldn't be making it great. Now, on our pizzas we use two layers of cheese. The bottom cheese. And the top cheese, right? <laughs> right. Since we measure the cheese, we'll just calibrate the scale with this bowl on it. Just put a clean bowl on the scale, zero it out, and then you're ready to go. That way we can leave the bowl on the scale and only measure what's in it. That makes sense. Now, we'll put some cheese in the bowl and we'll measure it out to the proper weight according to the spec chart. Let's see. Bottom cheese, medium pizza. Good. Now we'll measure out the exact amount and then place the cheese on top of the sauce. Again, starting at the outside and working toward the center. That doesn't look too hard. It's not. Just remember to spread the cheese evenly and try not to go beyond the sauce because that would burn and look bad. We wouldn't want that. Now, this order is for a medium pan pizza with pepperoni and green pepper. So what do we put on first? I don't know. Oh, I look on the spec chart, right? Right. Let's see. Medium pizza, pepperoni. Two columns, single and multiple. Which do I look under? Well, the single column is for single topping pizzas, like a medium pepperoni pizza. And the multiple column is for pizzas with multiple ingredients, like the one we're making. Okay, let's see. Here it is. I'll let you do this part. What does that mean? <laughs> Here, I'll show you. One, two, three, four, five. There. Notice how I started at the outside and worked my way towards the center, placing the pepperoni evenly. Got it. Green peppers next? Yes. Did you look at the spec chart? Uh-huh. Do I measure into here? Yes. Now what? Good. Now, place the green pepper on the pizza, starting at the outside and working your way towards the center just like I did with the sauce and the cheese and the pepperoni. That's good. Place them as evenly as you can. That's good. We're always careful to avoid center loading the topping because it could cause the pizza to be undercooked in the middle. I wouldn't want that if it was my pizza. What's next? 
Well, there are two more ingredients. The top cheese and the world famous fairy dust. Whoa, fairy dust? <laughs> That's right, Pizza Hut fairy dust. It's just a little magic ingredient that we have for making it great. Okay. <laughs> You'll see. All right, for the top cheese, how much do we need? Let's see. Here it is. Can I do it? Sure. Okay. I spread the cheese over the top of everything else, but not on the edge of the pizza. Right. How's that? That's good. Now we'll just make sure it's perfect. And now it's time for the fairy dust. This amazing substance is fairy dust and it magically transforms our ingredients into the perfect Pizza Hut pizza. Come on. Okay. Actually, it's a careful blend of cheese and spice, but it really does give our pizzas that extra delicious touch. And we're very careful about the number of shakes we use. You can check the spec chart for the right amount. You really do call it fairy dust. That's right. And now, you see what a delicious and perfect Pizza Hut pan pizza looks like before it goes into the oven. Now, we just put it here on the conveyor. Notice how the pizza starts completely outside of the oven. It'll be done in just a few minutes. These ovens are calibrated to perfectly cook a pizza as it travels through the oven. Now, while we're waiting for that to cook, why don't we talk about some of the other products you'll be making? Great. First of all, there's thin and crispy pizza. Thin and crispy pizza is the original Pizza Hut pizza. Of course, it's been fine-tuned over the years, all part of making it great. Now, as far as making the pizza goes, the main difference between thin and crispy pizza and pan pizza is the dough preparation. Pan pizza dough is portioned in pans and kept under refrigeration, but thin and crispy pizza crusts are made to order. Now, pan pizza proofs individually in the pans, but thin and crispy pizza dough rises in this container. Whenever you get an order for thin and crispy pizza, you have to prepare the crust. The only exception is during rush times, we might prep a few thin and crispy pizza shells in advance so that we can get them in the oven quickly. Because our customers count on us to make it fast. Right, and I'll show you how. Now, do you remember the safety procedures you learned about the dough roller? I sure do. Good, because we're going to be putting them into practice right now. First of all, you have to check the calibration of the dough roller to make sure that it delivers the proper dough weight. So you estimate about three ounces more than the finished dough. It's right here on the dough weight chart. So you pull out a chunk that you estimate is three ounces more than the weight on the spec chart. You'll get used to making these estimates, but for now we'll weigh the dough out. You form the dough into a flat circular patty by turning the dough around in your hands and folding the outside edge under. Then you flatten the patty to about an inch high by pressing down on top of it. Then you drop it into the top chute on the dough roller. Keep your fingers away from the chute and catch it as it comes out. Then you turn it sideways and put it into the lower roller. Make sure that it goes into there evenly. Got it. All right, as it comes out, you catch it on the back of your hands, being careful not to pull it or stretch it. That would cause thin spots or tearing and we'd have to start all over. Then you place the dough evenly in the pan and press it into place, making sure that there are no air bubbles. Next, you trim off the excess dough with the dough trimmer. We keep the scraps separate from the rest of the dough so it can rejuvenate. We can use the excess dough to make more pizzas after it's been in the separate bucket for two hours. Now we'd weigh the first shell to make sure the dough roller was set right. You see, if it was set too thick or too thin, the weight would be off. And that's why we make a test shell. We can adjust the dough roller so that the next one is right on target. Okay. Pre-pan thin and crispy pizza dough should look just like this. It should reach all the way to the edge, no air bubbles, no holes, and no cracks. If it doesn't look just right, we have to throw it away and start over. Check. But this one looks just right. You ready to give it a try? Sure. Now, if we were pre-rolling thin and crispy pizza crusts for a rush, that's a busy time, like dinner, then we would put a separator in between each one and we would mark the separator with the time that we did it. 
Pre-rolled thin and crispy pizza crusts are only good for 30 minutes because after that they start to dry out. So we throw away any pre-panned dough that we don't use right away. We'd really throw it away? <laughs> you bet, if it's over 30 minutes old. Also, we use the first ones we made before the last ones. We call this our first in, first out procedure. That way the customers never get anything less than the best. But say we were going to use this dough right away, then we would perforate it. Perforate it? Right, with this perforator. We only perforate the bottom of the dough, not the sides. So you make one firm pass over the surface of the dough, and then one right up the middle. That prevents bubbles, and then you're done. And how do we do toppings for thin and crispy pizza? Exactly the same way you did for a pan pizza. There's no difference in toppings for a pan pizza and a thin and crispy pizza, except that you go right to the edge with your sauce and cheese and toppings. We don't leave a half inch border. Like we did when we topped the pan pizza. Right, which by the way is out of the oven. Come on, I'll show you how to take it out and serve it. We always use a pan gripper, and we always wait till the pizza is completely out of the oven before we remove it. You see, we wouldn't want the pizza to be undercooked. Anyway, when any pizza is completely out of the oven to the last inch, we check it for quality. It has to look great or it doesn't go to the customer. This one looks great to me. It does. It's completely cooked. All pan pizzas should be golden brown and the cheese should be thoroughly melted. See? Just like on the cooking chart. If it doesn't look great, we start over. All our pizzas stage or set for 30 seconds before cutting. We'll use this cutting board. And this rocker knife. Be sure to hold it like this and cut all the way through the crust. This is a medium pizza, so it gets cut into eight slices. A small gets cut into six, and a large gets cut into 12. Now, if it's a carryout, you have to use one of those boxes. Make sure to use a box support and an insert. If the pizza is going to be served here, you'll put it back in the pan and place the pan and a spatula on a cork pad in the pickup area. The server will do the rest. No, the customer will do the rest when they bite into my delicious pizza. <laughs> delicious pan pizza and delicious thin and crispy pizza. What more could a customer want? Personal pan pizza. What? That's another important product you'll need to know about. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Personal pan pizza is a smaller version of our popular pan pizza, like the one we just made. It's a lunchtime favorite because it gives our customers that big pizza flavor in a lighter lunchtime size. And it's also ready fast, which is very important to our lunchtime customers. I've had that before. I bet you make a whole bunch of those every day. <laughs> we do. And that's why, depending on our prep list, we're going to be pre-topping some of them for the lunch rush. That's a good idea. Do we make them the same way as we make the larger pan pizzas? Almost, but there are a few important differences. First of all, we stamp personal pan pizza doughs after they've been proofed to give them the right shape and get them ready for topping. Also, because the topping amounts are much smaller, we use scoops to measure them. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. But we'll be going over personal pan pizzas in more detail later. Sounds good. There sure is a lot to know about making it great. I'll show you what you need to know to be a professional. For now, just keep in mind that it's your job to make sure our customers get the best quality pizza we can give them every time they're here, with no shortcuts and no compromises. And everything you need to know will be waiting right here to guide you. Just remember to follow the instructions exactly and you'll be just fine. And so will the pizzas, right? Right. Now, are you ready to try your hand at topping a thin and crispy pizza? Hey, I'm not just making pizza, I'm making it great. Now, let's go over the special topping procedures for hand-tossed traditional pizza. It has several unique ingredients, so there are some special ways that we make it great. Now, the dough master will have pre-portioned and panned the dough. So when you remove it from the refrigerator, just check it for quality and make sure the dough extends all the way to the bottom of the rim. For saucing, you'll spread on some of our special hand-tossed traditional pizza sauce to between the first and second perforation marks from the outer edge. Be sure that you don't go beyond that outer perforation mark. Then you'll distribute the bottom cheese out to that same line. Then the toppings go on to within half an inch of the edge. 
Now when you distribute the top cheese, be sure once again that you don't go beyond that outer perforation line. And make sure that the cheese and toppings completely cover the sauce. As always, avoid center loading. Then you'll clean up the outside edges and shake on the proper amount of fairy dust, just like we do with pan pizza and thin and crispy pizza. Don't worry, all of these instructions are included on the station guides. And the job aids near the make table will give you the proper ingredient amounts. That's all there is to it. That pizza will give them a reason to come back. There's one more product you need to know about, Priazzo. That's a rich double crust Italian pie and customers can choose from a variety of delicious fillings. That sounds delicious. Do we make it the same way as we make pizza? Sort of. When we make Priazzo, we use two layers of dough. First, we fill the bottom dough with hand-tossed traditional sauce and or filling according to the order. Then we add the triple cheese blend according to the spec chart. Then we roll, perforate, and layer on the top dough. And we top that dough with the proper sauce using a personal pan pizza spoon. We add more cheese blend and top that with fairy dust. Do we cook it the same way as we cook pizza? Well, we use one of these heat pins to make sure all the ingredients are completely cooked. The heat pin helps make sure the heat is evenly distributed, but otherwise the cooking procedure is the same. That's some pie. 